the ancient mystics had a school of teaching that was associated with what was called the ecstatic schools. They would study and meditate and reach intense emotions of utter ecstasy. And they would corral these emotions of ecstasy and they would align them and direct them with key objectives of unification. They saw the world as being broken. They saw a world where randomness and chaos is allowed to reign. Where the architecture and meaning behind every event and every action is cloaked. And they yearned to withdraw the cloak of divinity of every walking soul so that with the light of that divinity the virtual perception of randomness and chaos would begin to recede. That shadow would begin to recede. Amongst the students of these schools you had those that would study what was called Masa Markava. The mechanics of Markava. Markava is a Semitic word. It means chariot. But in this respect, it's referring to something specific. The divine chariot. The idea meaning that the soul is somehow, to a degree, stranded here in this dimension. That it has a vehicle to activate, to transport itself and visit the place where it comes from and return back to this space. When I teach about this, and I feel it's okay to teach about this because there's so much being taught today. And today we have technology and advancement that gives us more accurate facsimiles and analogies to the concepts we're discussing. In ancient times, they would have to swear that they would not reveal these secrets to others. And they were banned from teaching about it in public. But in this space, in this time, this is the birthright of everyone in attendance and everyone listening to this recording. To crystallize these ideas in a way that are elegant and easily to absorb, I'm going to try to explain them in a way that lacks any intimidation and is free to embrace from an authentic and intimate space. I want you to envision a beautiful chariot on the countryside. It's a royal chariot, and the king and the queen are there. And in the back, there is a little girl. The little girl is a princess. The chariot is going along the king's way, and bandits approach, and they ransack and they kidnap the king and the queen, and they do not discover that the princess is in the back. And the chariot begins to roll on its own. It has no driver. It roams from place to place. Every once in a while, the horses get tired, they sip the water, they hit a rock, and they stop and they rest. And the princess grows up in this chariot thinking that she's in this chariot, the chariot owns her, and that it takes her and guides her wherever she arrives. And she has no concept that there are reins on the chariot, or that the whole purpose of the horses is so that she takes the reins and guides the horses where it is that she wills her desire to go. 
And the princess gets older and older. And one day, the horses, they're riding in the countryside looking for something to drink. And they're going sideways, backwards, and in a long winding path. And they hit the hut of an old hermit, sagely old man. He comes out with a bucket of water and a cloth. And he approaches the princess and he washes the dirt from her face and says, you are a princess. And this wagon does not determine where you go, but this wagon is built for you. And I will teach you how to hold the reins, and how to guide the horses, and it will take you where you desire. Because you are royalty and you are free. Every single human being is an expression of the benevolent will of the Creator. The birthright of every single soul is a powerful creative cord that was entrusted to them from the Creator. It is irreplaceable and one of a kind. And it is the responsibility of every sovereign soul to realize that you're supposed to be different. You're supposed to be authentically unique because there is no replication. And that creative cord is unique to your design. So, the ancient mystics would teach about the divine chariot. And I want to simplify it. Because they had all these equations and mathematics relating to seven creative worlds and how they intersect and share and how one is supposed to navigate them and climb step step to step up the celestial ladder. And all this is very complicated and it's not necessary because the reins are before you and the chariot will follow exactly where you instructed to go. So here it goes. This is the modernized version of Mahasem Akava. There's an aspect of God that represents everything that has happened before. We'll call that mother. It's from where you were birthed. There's an aspect of God that represents everything that will be. It's infinite. Let's call that God, the He. Now, I want you to recognize a divide, a filter, a barrier. It's like a river. You look down on the river and you see your own reflection. As these aspects, the past and the future, get reflected in the river of freedom, it creates a reflection of the same. All the events past, and all the benevolence that will ever be. You stand in the middle. All the benevolence of the future or consequence of you. All has transpired in the past 
is redeemed as you allow the benevolence of the future to change the music and the trajectory of all that has occurred before. The mystical concept is that our world and its construction, and even the human being, are one of many, 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 many worlds. Worlds that were created and worlds that were destroyed. Destruction always happened for the same reason. They could not find harmony and balance with the rest of creation. There's a grand experiment within the earthly experience. We amplify variation. You have more choice. And so therefore, when you choose to love, your love is more poignant, more real. But on condition, all the creative worlds that have ever existed have access to participate in the human experiment. They blow their winds. At times, winds of discontent. At times, winds of satisfaction. The chords and creative chords of these worlds flow into your every now. You are the conductor riffing off the music of all that has happened before and all that will ever happen. Recognize that when we think of God in the singular, we're talking about a light, a sun, that spreads out its benevolence, its ecstasy from a single point. And when we think of God in the plural, we're focusing on all the light that fills up all the space. Until there's no darkness left at all. Each of you are part of that light, a ray. The concept of Markava is there's a triangulation that takes root. There's a mother, there's a father. And when the mother and the father are intimate, they bring forth a child, a child of thought. The child of thought in many cultures has different names. Taoists call it knowingness. Christians call it Christ, anointed. Mystics call it dot, knowing. It's a knowing child. What's the point of the experiment? The point of the experiment of divinity is to experience your own separateness so you can discover the passion and the love and the re-embrace. Now understand, you have all the past is a sun, which is the womb from all of creation. It is omega, it is mother. You have all the future that will ever be, that is father. And you allow these two lights to coalesce and imbue each other. These two circles to override, making a Piscean shape. That little overlap is a new creation called the child, which is you. Which is you in your creative abundance. So there are two cycles of trajectories of creation that we need to pay attention to that are necessary for the chariot. There is a cycle of initial abstraction into, into crystallized creation. We'll call that above the first filter. The mystics called that the ancient ones. 
when they allude to God's persona as the ancient one. They'll say, the ancient ones revert, revealed to Moses the tablets at Sinai. And then there's, after the filter, almost like a wall. If we were playing music in this room and someone would be in the next room, they wouldn't hear the music, they would hear the beats. It would be a bit more raw. You can dance to it, but you can't hear the tenor. You can't hear the romance of it. So let's refer to above the filter. We'll dedicate that to pure energy and creativity. And below the filter, we'll dedicate that to all thought and all action. Where things get a lot more specific and a lot more rigid. Incidentally, the angelic realms are associated with the realm of thought. And those of anointed consciousness, those that attain greatness and spirituality as an avatar in the human form, that's associated with the world of action, the world of actuality. It's where you allow your love to crystallize and color the world in you. So we've already alluded to above the filter, which is at the primal, creative, abstract space of the music. There is an alpha and an omega. The world is birthed by the Divine Mother, which represents all the past. It gives birth to variation, opposites, juxtapositions in order to create choice and freedom and context and depth. When all of these reconvene in the future, that eternal light, that's God is masculine. And you, you're the conduit in between with the ability to open your eyes, the knowing child, in the filter below, representing the worlds of thought and action, there is again, there is the mother. The cosmic mother breaks things down in order to have individualized perception and individualized thought. If you think about the sequence that happens in human reproduction, you'll recognize that initially the male produces a seed that has, figuratively speaking, infinite potential, infinite candidates. The female, there is one egg. The egg absorbs just one bit of potential. fertilizes the egg, the egg begins to multiply its chromosomes. That's the masculine energy. The female energy subtracts it. It multiplies, the female energy subtracts it. Because if it would continue to multiply and multiply and multiply, it would never exist tangibly in a physical world. And so there is a creative field that gives boundaries and constraints in order to be able to have an integrity and constitution that is elegant for the task at hand. That force is what we refer to 
is the omega force, the creative mother force within creation, within the angelic and actualized dimensions. There is another force of infinite potential. The future is always unwritten and it will continue and continue and continue. The light and benevolence of that future is a future of unity, cohesion, and grace. How far away that future sun shines is completely interdependent. The world's above and the reliance upon the world's below. We are part of the world's below. Our choice, the awakening child within those two polarities, we can stretch how far apart those two are and how close they converge and convene. So I want you to visualize two triads. One triad above. The wide part is on top. <coughs> Goes A, B to C below. A triangle that looks like an arrow pointing down. To the right is the future. To the left is the past. Centered, but below is the knowing child that represents you. You become the circuit. With the help of you, the future and the past are unified. Without you, they are polarized, going in opposite directions. When you enter your consciousness into the field, you pull the light from each and you bind it and you anchor it into you, causing a field between the three. Mother of the past, father of the future, and the knowing child. All of it like an arrow pointing downward. These are in the abstract dimensions of consciousness, of energy, and creativity. Then, after the filter, again, an arrow. This one pointing up. The base is represented by the mother divine energy that breaks things down in order to have individualized expression and elegance within this terrain. Otherwise, everything would just expand into one big everything. And the other is the illuminated benevolence of a united future. That is the base. You, your awakened consciousness, you are above it. When you are awake, those two opposite points, that polarity, they create a circuit. They surge and connect to you above, to your awareness. They are not disconnected anymore. There is a circuit. When you activate consciously your awareness on both these levels, that filter that divides them begins to erode. The two triads are able to commingle and create a single field. The two triangles will meet and create the shape of what is called Markava. It's a sacred shape. 
It's also alluded to as the star of David. <coughs> the reason why it's called the star of David is not because David ever utilized this star on any of his regalia, shields, or uniforms. It is because each of the creative dimensions was associated with a different, what was called biblical persona or divine shepherd. David represented sovereignty in the dimension of actualization. When they allude, when they allude to this field, they're talking about the juxtaposition of these two triads, creating this new hexagonal space. That is a space of zero point energy, of absolute freedom, of not being a byproduct of what's happened before or what will happen in the future, but of absolute choice of beingness. That space is called true sovereignty. That space was called Christ. That space was called knowingness. That is why they called it the Star of David. Because when those two triads cross, it creates that field. When you are awakened in realigning the worlds above, the past and the future above, and the past and the future below, you create a circuitry of unity. To where the solutions to every impasse, every disconnect, is suddenly being broadcast. The music of everything that has been resolved is already playing within the consciousness of the dimensions that are within that field. Suddenly the artists, suddenly those that are early adapters begin to pick and create. They pick off and they riff off that field. And then impasses that were too large and extensive to get beyond are suddenly Passe. The world becomes a lot less primitive. The spiritually awakened individual doesn't need to go outside and protest or make a change. The spiritually awakened individual can recognize that they're one of the few that can awaken to recognize that they are in the chariot that the reins are before them and they can design the chariot of where they wish it to go. They can reclaim their own divinity, their majesty within the pantheon of the divine. And within that expression of true love, they can bring unity between Alpha and Omega. between the past and the future that transforms our every now.